Hello there, I am Sagar Jatani from Department of Electrical Engineering, GMIT. In today's session, we are going to discuss about one more example on the Fourier series. In our previous lecture, we had discussed uh, one particular sawtooth wave, and for this, for that, we had calculated the Fourier series in the form of trigonometry. But in today's session, we are going to discuss the same waveform, but it is a full wave sawtooth. And today we are going to discuss about the Fourier series and inside the Fourier series we will have to find the cosine term of the Fourier series. So to find the cosine Fourier series we have to consider this function or this equation in today's session that is x of t is equal to a0 plus sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity a n cos n omega 0 t plus theta n. And this is the waveform for which we are calculating the cosine Fourier series. So, if we are considering this function or this definition of a cosine Fourier series, then we have to find total 3 to 4 terms. The first term is a0, the second term that is a n, the third term that is omega 0 and the theta n. So, to find the a0, which is equal to a small a0, is similar to trigonometric Fourier series, means if you want to find the cosine Fourier series, then first we have to find the trigonometric Fourier series, then and then we can find the uh, cosine Fourier series. So, if if we if we can discuss for the same, then trigonometric Fourier series is the easiest method uh, to find the Fourier series in the terms of a sine and cosine. But cosine Fourier series, if we want to find the cosine Fourier series, then we have to calculate the sine and cosine also. So, to find the a zero, we have to find this a zero. To find the a n, we have to find the a n square plus b n square all under root, and the theta n. If you want to find the theta n, then theta n is equal to minus 10 inverse b n by a n. Okay. Here we have minus at the outside of this bracket. If this minus is, is with the minus b n, then there will be a different meaning. And if this minus is here with the a n, then again there will be a different meaning because there will be a change in the quotients. Okay. Now, so consider this function. We have to find a 0, a n and theta n. But to find the a0, we have to consider this equation that is a, a0, a n and b n. So, in each and every term, we have to find the time period that is capital T, where the graph is starting and where the graph is ending for to find the a0. Means to find the a0, we need t0, t0 plus t as well as t and x of t. Similarly, for a n, we need to find the time period that is t, the function that is x of t and the omega 0 for all the terms means method will be very lengthy so first of all let us find the values of omega 0 so that we can find the values of a 0 a n and b n okay so first find the values of omega 0 then we will find the values of t 0 t 0 plus t as well as the time period and then we will calculate the function how we can calculate the function that let us discuss at the below side so considering the same graph that we have taken in the question taken from, taken from the question so see here this is our graph that is x of t first let us find the time period so see here our function is starting at the location of a zero and it is repeating itself after fixed interval of time that is a 2 pi so the time period of this function or this sawtooth wave that is a t is equal to 2 pi so we have completed our first thing now from where our function is starting it is starting from the origin that is a 0 that's why the t0 is equal to 0 and where it is ending or where it is completing it, its first cycle so it is completing its first cycle at the location of a t0 plus t at that location we have value of 2 pi that's why the limit for our integration will be from t0 to t0 plus 2 pi will be from 0 to 2 pi so we have completed our second task and now the third task is to find the values of omega 0 because to calculate the values of a0, a n and b n we need the values of omega 0. So the omega 0 is a fundamental frequency that is given by the 2 pi by t and as we know that the t is equal to 2 pi so it will give 2 pi by 2 pi that is equal to omega 0 is equal to 1. So now we have completed our third task. Now the fourth task that is find the mathematical expression for our function or for our graph that is given 
here in the question. So to find the equation or expression for this two to twelve form, let us separate a small part of our sequence or a small part of our periodic signal that is considered here. So see here, our graph is starting from zero. It has some positive slope and it has an infinite slope. at the location of a 2 pi so that same gra graph i have drawn here it has a time axis that is a t it has a magnitude of a and this is our function that is x of t now if you want to define the location of a point where it is a starting and where it is ending so at the starting point we have location 0, 0 the first term is x1 let us consider it is a starting point, point that's why we are considering x1 ending point that is a y1 and here the second point that is a x2 and y2 the first term x2 is a 2 pi y x means horizontal axis or we can also say that it is a t2 y2 but here consider the on the horizontal axis we have the values of a 2 pi that i have consider here 2 pi on the y axis we have the magnitude a that's why i consider here a now let us find the values of a particular graph or expression of a particular graph by using the line equation that is a y is equal to mx plus c where y is our function that is x of t x is our horizontal axis that is a t and c is a constant where the our graph is intersecting the uh, vertical axis so first of all let us find the values of m m is a slope of our graph so here we have positive slope So m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. You know these kind of equations very well because the same expression we have calculated in our chapter number one as well as in the chapter number two, signals and systems. Okay. Now let us consider the values of y2 and y1 from this graph. So here we have to put the values of y2 and y1. So value of y2 is a and the values of y1 is a zero. So a minus zero. So same thing I have written here. Now the values of x2 minus x1. So value of x2 is a 2 pi, and the values of x1 that is a 0. So I have considered here 2 pi minus 0. So a minus 0 will give a, and 2 pi minus 0 will give 2 pi. So our slope will be from, or our slope will be of a by 2 pi. That's why I have considered m is equal to a upon 2 pi. Put this value to this expression that is m x plus c. So our expression will looks like y is equal to The values of m, that is a upon 2 pi, into x plus c. Now, to find the values of a c, uh, to to find the values of a c, we have to put any one point from this equation or this graph. So let us consider uh, the values from this same line, that is 0 comma 0. So if you put the values of a y and x, it is a 0 and 0. So we will have after putting this value 0 comma 0 to this expression, we will have. A, C is equal to zero. Means our graph will or our line will be intersect to the vertical axis at the location of a zero. So simply, we have y is equal to m x plus c. The value of m is a upon two pi. Value of c is a zero. So our expression ultimately will be look like this. That is a x of t is equal to a upon two pi into t. Here in our first case, we have considered the horizontal as a x. But actually, it is t. So I am just replacing the values of x with the t, and our function that is a y. So instead of y, I am just considering the our function that is x of t. So this is our fourth task that we have completed to here. Now let us calculate the values of a zero, a n, and b n. To calculate the values of a zero, we have to consider this equation. to find the values of an we have to consider this cosine function and to find the values of bn we have to consider this sine function now let us consider the values of uh, a0 that is 1 upon t integration from 0 t0 to t0 plus t x of t dt now the values of t is 2 pi that we have calculated here the integration limit will be from 0 to 2 pi and omega 0 is equal to 1 simple okay And our function that we have calculated that is a upon 2 pi into t dt. So put all the values here and do the integration. You will get the answer that is a a zero is equal to a by 2. Now to find the values of a n, we have to consider this equation that is a n is equal to 2 by t integration from t zero to t zero plus t x of t 
cos n omega 0 t. Now the values of a t is equal to 2 pi. The value of, of a function that is x of t is equal to a upon 2 pi into t and the values of omega 0 is equal to 1. So put all the values in this expression you will get this equation. It is a 2 upon 2 pi integration from 0 to 2 pi x of t that is a upon 2 pi into t and the cos n omega 0 is equal to 1 that is why cos n t. Now let us take the constant outside from this integration. So our function will become a upon 2 pi square integration from 0 to 2 pi t cos n t dt. Now to calculate or define the integration from 0 to 2 pi and after completing the uh, integration by integra by method of uh, by using the method of integration by parts you will get this expression and after putting the limits in the first term and after doing the integration and putting the uh, limits in the second term you will get this kind of term and ultimately 0 minus 0 and here 1 minus 1 so 1 minus 1 is a 0 on the numerator so entire term will be will goes to 0. So the value of a n is equal to 0. You have to remember this term that if we have a function like this okay means it is not mirrored with the y axis then we will get the values of a n 0 or a value of a n is equal to 0 and now let us consider the values of b n. To find the values of b n we have to consider this equation that is a b n is equal to 2 by t integration from t0 to t0 plus t x of t sin n omega 0 t dt. Same the put the values of a t that is a 2 pi put the limits from t0 to t0 plus t that is a 0 to 2 pi and the our function that is x of t a upon 2 pi into t and the sin n will be as it is the value of omega 0 is equal to 1 and t dt will be as it is. Now same apply the method of integration that is integration by parts to the sequence and you will get ultimately the b n is equal to minus a by pi n. Now we have all the values that is a 0, a n and b n. Now we have to find the cosine term of a Fourier series. Then what we have to do first we have to find the capital a 0 which is similar to small a 0 and the answer of the a 0 will be a by 2. To find the a n we have to take the squares of a n plus b n and then we have to take the under root of both the squares ok. So after squaring and adding both the functions and take the under root of both the functions what you will have that is a upon n pi and to find the values of theta n that is equal to minus 10 inverse b by a, b n by a n. So the value of b n that is a minus a upon pi n and value of n that is equal to 0. So our function will go to infinity that will be equal to minus pi by 2. Now we have all these values that is a 0, a n, theta n and the omega 0. Okay, omega 0 that we have calculated at the starting of our example. So that is x of t that is equal to a by 2 plus sigma n is equal to 1 to infinity a, a upon n pi into cos n t minus pi by 2. So this is the cosine form of a Fourier series. If you put different values of n to this expression, you will get entire Fourier series in the terms of a cosine only. Here we are not considering the sinusoid term because our series is a cosine Fourier series or we can say that it is a even Fourier series or we can say that we have separated the even terms from the Fourier series. So if you want to draw this sawtooth waveform by using this expression we will have to put the difference value different values of n from 1 to infinity and ultimately we will get the sawtooth waveform. In the next lecture we will discuss this kind of example because in today's session we have calculated the value of a0, a and b n. In the next lecture we will discuss about the wave symmetry because each and every time if you want to find the values of a0, an and bn it will be very tough to us. If we analyze the functions that we have for that we are calculating the Fourier series then we can conclude this kind of a table that if we have a function which has even symmetry 
a function which has a even even symmetry then we will we will only have to find the values of a0 and an we don't need to find the values of a b and y because each and every time if we have a function which has a even symmetry then every time the values of a b and will go zero will get zero so at the if, you, if we will discuss the entire terms that uh, what kind of even symmetry signals look like so this kind of signals will be similar to the even term and this will be this even term so i will give some example with the answer so that you can calculate by yourself okay let us just re revise all the terms that is the odd symmetry means it it does not make any mirror image with the vertical axis that's why it is known as odd symmetry just revise by yourself tomorrow in the tomorrow's lecture we will do the same okay this is a half wave symmetry and this is the quarter wave symmetry so this is the end of our lecture to tomorrow in the tomorrow's lecture we will uh, discuss about the wave symmetry that is even symmetry or symmetry half wave symmetry and quarter wave symmetry uh, by using this symmetry topic we can uh, conclude each and every example easily there will be a no need to find the values of a0 a and b and each and every time if we have odd symmetry then we just have to find the values of b and there is no need to find the values of a0 and a because ultimately it will give us a zero answer okay so this is the end of our lecture tomorrow we will meet soon in the same session